Hello and welcome back to Oasis Top Tips. Did you know you can customise and save views in Oasis Primer, making it easy to navigate around a model? Today I'll be showing you some of the basics of how to navigate around a model, which might differ from other software you've used, but also hopefully some advanced tips that you might not have used before but will improve your workflow. So I've just got the Honda Accord model open and I'm going to start by showing you some basic navigations and then near the end of the video I'll show you some more advanced techniques you might like to use to save you time when you're viewing models. So first of all, using the mouse to navigate around the model, you need to hold down the shift button. If you have your cursor in the centre of the screen and hold down shift, then you'll be rotating as if you're rotating around a sphere. If, however, you have your cursor near the edge of the screen, holding down the left mouse button and rotate, you'll see you're rotating around a vector normal to the screen. Using a combination of these, we can achieve any orientation we might desire. But this can be quite fiddly, so I'll explain how to be more precise with this in a, in a bit. With the middle mouse button and the shift down, we can see that we can pan the model around. And with the shift held down and the right mouse button, we can zoom in and out. So those are most of the mouse commands you might need. If you hold down shift and control together, you'll get the same functionality, but with wireframe mode, which can be really useful if you're trying to look at a model which has lots of hidden parts. Similarly, if you hold down just the control button, you'll have a very reduced view with only a few things displayed. This can be quite useful if your model is so big that it is sluggish when rotating. And for this, I'd recommend really using the triad in the bottom right to see where you're positioning and then releasing the control when you're happy with your position. Okay, so I'm just gonna return the view back to normal using one of these preset views. And that brings me on to the concept of views. You'll see these eight green buttons in the control pane with XY plus and YZ plus and XZ plus and ISO, isometric plus. So if I click through each of them, you see XY shows me the XY plane with Z vertical. And if I clicked XY minus, it shows me the same thing, but with a Z in the, in the negative direction. And you can play, scroll through all of these to get a nice view of your model. If you want to center your model uh, so that you can see everything, you'll click the AC button, which is auto center. Similarly, you can press the A button on your keyboard. There are also shortcuts for each of these eight views, which you can reach by pressing the keys one to eight on your keyboard. So one will be top view, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, where one to four are the top row and five to eight are the bottom. You might have also noticed these arrows next to the preset views. These can be really handy for rotating the model in more precise increments. By default, it is set to rotate view. So if I press the up arrow, it will rotate about a horizontal vector, the down arrow about horizontal vector the other way, right and left about a vertical vector, and then the two arrows pointing to the top left and top right rotate around a vector normal to the screen. That is similar to having your cursor near the edge of the screen, holding down shift and rotating around. Now, these increments are set by going to the viewings and settings pane. And we can see the defaults are five degrees for the rotation. There's a translation of 0.1, magnification of 25% and a time delay which is used if you hold down the cursor, how long it is between each increment. So if I set the time delay to say 0.8, for example, I might type it in. Then if I hold down the right button, it will increment every 0.8 seconds around. Going back to the viewing settings, and let's maybe change the rotation angle to 45 degrees for example. And we can see that now every increment it rotates 45 degrees around. So this can be really useful if you've used 
combination of preset views and maybe the arrows. You might have also noticed the RTS button. That is just changing the options available to you. So these arrows are for rotation. If we click once again, we get the translation buttons. And once more, we get scaling, so zooming in and out. You can also be more selective with how you zoom by clicking the zoom button or alternatively the Z button on your keyboard and zooming in. Let's maybe select a box around the steering wheel. Now we've zoomed in. If we accidentally change view and we want to go back to the previous view, then there's a really easy way to do that. Just next to the RTS button, there are these two arrows. If we press the left arrow, it will go back to a previous view that we've had and the right arrow will go forwards to the next view. And it will scroll through all the views in the list. So it will go back to the last saved view. We can also make custom views by clicking on the views button and you'll see a view pane where we can store the views or list any views we've saved. You can even have files and save them and import them to different models if you have certain views that you like. How about we rotate the model around 45 degrees and store this view. You can see I've already saved a couple of views, so I'll use one that's not been used yet. And I'll save it as side 45, for example. Now, if I listed the views, you can see that my third saved view is side 45. And if I wanted to go to that view, let's move the model around to somewhere else and I can click get, click on side 45 and it will return me to that view. If I want to get another view, say rear skew, then I can click on a different one. I can also delete the view if I don't want it anymore. And so if I wanted to store the view number two is no longer in use. You can change where the views are saved to by clicking the file button. By default, it will be saved to a file called plot view. And these are typically saved across sessions. So if you close and reopen, you'll have those views available to you. Now views only really save the camera position. So the angle that you're looking at your model. But what if you wanted to save more stuff like maybe elements that you had blanked? So let's block blank the bonnet here, for, for example change to this view and maybe we will click views and store this view in slot two as view two, why not? Then if we move around the model and then want to protrude that view, we can quite easily do so. But if we unblank by clicking view, or we could also click the all button in the viewing pane. And then we return to the view we've only saved the camera position. We don't have the blanking save. Primer has a very powerful save properties button, which allows you not only to save the camera view, but also other attributes like the elements that have been blanked or been made transparent, for example. So let's just, for example, blank the front of the car and maybe make this wheel transparent. and maybe the bonnet, maybe 50% transparent, for example. Okay, and then let's click the Save Properties button. Now you'll see it changes to one slash one. That means one property has been saved. If I was then to unblank everything and undo those changes, and maybe save this new view with the Save Properties button, then I can click the arrows to go back to the previous view. And what you'll notice is not only is the view the same, but we also have the blanking and the transparency and everything else we had set the same. This can be really useful if you want to have certain parts, a certain color and a certain view when you open up or a certain orientation is required for interrogating the model. You can actually save these views by going to options and export them to a file. You can also change what it is that is kept track of. By default, everything is selected. So blanking, transparency, entities, viewing, color. But maybe you only want to just keep track of some of these. So you can toggle them on and off as you wish. 
I hope you've seen that using a combination of the mouse and the buttons in the control plane allow you to have really powerful control about how to move your model and how to get it into views and positions that are useful for you. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Look out for more videos which we release each month with top tips.